started. Uh, Dr. Robinson, you have some opening remarks for us. Good evening. We request that all cell phones and pagers be turned to vibrate or turned off during the course of this meeting. Thank you. It has become a tradition to honor our nation at each of our board meetings by, by presenting the colors and reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. The colors tonight are being presented by the National Junior ROTC Color Guard from Granby High School under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer Jerome Ferret. Please rise and remain standing for the presentation of the colors and re the reciting of the Pledge of Allegiance. We will I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So welcome again. We're going to uh, move right forward with the uh, agenda. Uh, next, we have item 4.03, uh, Superintendent's Report, Dr. Boone. Good evening, uh, Mr. Jordan, members of the board, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this evening for the Superintendent's Report, we, we again thank Channel 47 and all in the Communications Department for putting together a, a report of highlights, if you will, of, of happenings in Norfolk Public Schools in the last couple of weeks since our last board meeting. So we'll ask them to roll the tape, please. Norfolk Public Schools celebrated its third school groundbreaking in just under a year at Larchmont Elementary in early January. After brief comments about the importance of the new school, City and school officials, along with staff and students from Larchmont, began shoveling, marking the beginning of a brand new Larchmont Elementary. Well, I'm just excited about the opportunity for another school to come up. We know that the physical environment is critical to the learning environment. So, you know, just being here today after all the hard work, having the partnership with the city, seeing this come about, having the community step forward and support it and say how important investing in our schools is, uh, you know, I think it's critically important. It is a step into the 21st century as our students need to be challenged with things that the building prevented us from being able to do. So hopefully with the technology aspect and the new design of the building, it will enable us to have a higher academic standards for our students here in Largemont. Meanwhile, the new Richard Bowling Elementary at Broad Creek is shaping up to be ready by the start of the next school year. To celebrate the progress, a topping off ceremony was held. During the event, school and city officials were able to tour the facility. This building will house science, computer, and project labs, as well as a state-of-the-art media center for the students of the Broad Creek community. Members of two local chapters of the International Longshoremen's Association played Santa in mid-December as they delivered over 30 bicycles to Monroe Elementary students. This is the third year that the group has made a donation to a school during the holidays, and their reasons for doing so were clear. Well, it's, it's always important to give back because you got to look at it as you was growing up in your younger days. You know, you had a role model, you had an individual that come into the community and do things for the kids in the community, especially love, to let them know that, you know, there's somebody besides their natural born parents and mother and father that really care about them. 
Erica Tucker, founder of the nonprofit charity Pajama Jams, whose mission is to bring comfort to children in their time of need, partnered with NPS by providing much needed pajamas to children who might otherwise go without. This is the second year that Pajama Jams has partnered with NPS, and this year three of our elementary schools hosted them Jaycox, Tidewater Park, and PB Young. Each location was provided with enough PJs for any and all students, regardless of their needs. I just want to share in what is sometimes considered a luxury, um, and some of these kids have never had pajamas, and I know that my kids never go without, and I have some volunteers here that never go without, and it's nice that we can collect pajamas and offer this um, little comfort to these kids right before Christmas. The City of Norfolk's Department of Public Works held a rally at Ruffner Middle School just prior to winter break. This event was designed to encourage students to strive for good grades and to try to be the best people they can be. Wavy TV's Anita Blanton was the host. Special guests included NFL Hall of Famer Bruce Smith and Boxing Hall of Famer Purnell Sweet Pea Whitaker. The goal of this event was just to introduce them to some people who are from the city of Norfolk who uh, attended Norfolk Public Schools and went on to uh, become successful in their own right. And we just wanted them to uh, talk a little bit about how it was growing up in Norfolk and just give them encouragement to um, develop and just to stay in school and uh, stay away from any of the troubles or ills that they may encounter. My message to kids is you don't have to be a product of your environment. You know, you can, you can be successful no matter what's going on in your life. In December, prospective students and their parents attended an open house at Norfolk Technical Center. They saw club poster presentations, visited classrooms and labs, met teachers, and even participated in a crafts bazaar. That same night, Lake Taylor High School hosted students and parents who were interested in the district's middle and high school specialty programs. Each program was featured with a special presentation in the auditorium, while out in the foyer, first-hand information was available from teachers and both current and former students in the programs. Well, I'm here to help out Ms. Pryor and Ms. Butler because they were like my favorite teachers and they asked as advice, asked as a favor if any of alum alumni could come and tell about the program and our experiences. And I love the program so I could do anything I can to help. There is so much within the city, within the school system of Norfolk that uh, opportunities for students. I think to present something like this and have a forum like this where parents can see what is offered for middle school students and high school students, it just gives them more information about opportunities and options that are available. Well, with my daughter going into middle school, I want to see what um, the different programs are that's out there and see what they have to offer so I can make sure to send her to the best place. I believe that it is very important. Prior to coming here, I didn't know what any of the middle schools had to offer for my baby. However, now I'm very well aware and I plan on submitting lots of applications. The Medical and Health Specialties Program at Morey High School recognized 33 seniors during their 7th Annual White Shirt Ceremony. As part of the ceremony, each student's name was read as they crossed the stage in their white shirts. They later recited the student Hippocratic Oath to show their commitment to learning and each other. The history of the, the white shirt or the white coat for the doctors is that passing of knowledge from people who have worked hard and lived life and gotten those experiences and we want to do that with the students um, and so that's where the white shirt ceremony came from. International baccalaureate graduates from Granby High School's class of 2015 returned to their alma mater to receive their IB diplomas or IB certificates during a special ceremony. Oh my lord, it was amazing, absolutely great. Um, I think finally crossing the stage is when you finally realize, now it's like you cross stage back in June, but crossing it now today was kind of the final wrap up for all high school. It was just a really great experience to finally say that you did it and kind of gloat for a little bit. Um, it gives them a chance to come back together. It gives us a chance to um, really congratulate those who earned the diploma, which is a really high achievement for any high school student um, and those who also earn the IB certificate because um, whether it's an IB diploma or an IB certificate they had four years of hard work in high school and we need to congratulate them for that. This has been the January Report. So as you can see we're having some great 
times in, in Norfolk Public Schools. We're, we're taking care of our ch students and, and children and helping meet some needs. And we're, we're showcasing the best of our academic programs and opportunities for all of our students. And so, you know, I'm excited that we can use these few moments to let the public really know what we're doing in Norfolk Public Schools. Who better to tell our story than us? Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, next on our agenda is the KPMG 2014-2015 uh, <laughs> Annual Audit Report. Dr. Boone. Thank you. Um, I'll ask Dr. Thornton to, to come up and, and introduce this particular report. Uh, it is an annual report to the board as it relates to the district's audit. Thank you, Dr. Boone. Uh, Mr. Jordan, school board members, good evening. Uh, agenda item that you have before you is the formal presentation of the results of the 2014-15 financial audit uh, conducted by the uh, international accounting and audit firm of KPMG. We have with us this evening a partner from KPMG, Ms. Cyril Sistros, who is familiar uh, to board members. Uh, she also uh, oversees the audit of the city, which is a separate audit from Norfolk Public Schools. So Ms. Sistros is here to provide you with the uh, results. Thank you uh, very much for allowing me to come back and talk to you again about uh, the completion of the audit. Um, as you know, the, the school board does have an audit committee and we meet with the audit committee a couple of times as we perform the engagement. So this will be a little bit of an abbreviated report because we've been through the details with uh, Ms. Doyle and Reverend Haywood uh, previously. Um, we did issue the comprehensive annual financial report or the opinions on that report for the schools right before the holidays. Uh, we issued an unmodified opinion, a clean opinion, uh, both uh, for the um, financial statements themselves as well as the uh, government auditing standards, internal control, and compliance opinions. So we'll start with There we go. <laughs> it helps if you turn it on. <laughs> so uh, there, there should be in your materials a letter that's dated December 18th. It looks like this. And that letter constitutes our required communications to the governing body of an entity that we're performing an audit of. And uh, I won't go through these in a great deal of detail, but the letter discusses our responsibility, what an audit is, what an audit isn't, um, you know, how we look at internal control in the context of, you know, of performing the audit procedures rather than giving an opinion on controls. It also informs you that we've read this entire book. The opinion doesn't cover the entire book, but we do read it to make sure it's consistent with uh, what we've learned from performing the audit. Um, uh, the accounting policies that the school board uses are included in the first note to the financial statements. Uh, as you know from the presentation that we came and gave in November, the school system did implement uh, GASB 68 this year related to the pension liabilities. And uh, those liabilities were recorded um, basically with the numbers that we reported to you previously. Uh, in terms of management ju judgments and accounting estimates, there are always significant estimates that go into the preparation of financials. Um, the pension liability, which is a very large liability on the balance sheet, involves estimates around uh, actuarial calculations and and. Uh, retirement dates and that type of thing, as does the other post-employment benefits, which is the post-retirement health care plan that the schools have, and the self-insurance program. We've taken a look at all those estimates and, uh, you know, did not take any exception to 
uh, the numbers that management had put forth uh, prior to uh, our audit procedures. Um, there are always a few uh, you know, immaterial adjustments that do or don't get made. They're attached to the letter. I won't go through those in detail uh, because we've been through them with the audit committee, but uh, they were immaterial and uh, were not recorded for that reason. Um, no disagreements with management uh, or any issues in performing the audit. And, you know, I will say that, uh, you know, this is the first year in a while that we've actually finished the audit before the holidays. And, you know, I'd like to credit Dr. Thornton and uh, Shanette Felton and her staff for uh, a lot of hard work that they've put in to uh, really improve the financial reporting process here at the Norfolk Public Schools to make that, to make that work. Um, so anyway, kudos to them, and also thank you very much for the hospitality and the assistance that they extended to us in performing the audit. Um, Norfolk Public Schools is also a uh, part of the, um, the A133 or the single audit of federal grants that's performed at the, at the city of Norfolk level uh, because the public schools are a component unit of the city. That's done in one, uh, as one process. Uh, there were three programs that were audited this year for the schools. Uh, the special education program, the Title I uh, uh, cluster, and national school breakfast and lunch. Uh, the school system does have a number of the largest programs that the city of Norfolk has as part of their uh, federal audit. So we usually have a number of programs that are subject to audit, and some, like Title I, typically get audited almost every year. Um, there were three findings that were noted as part of the audit, and I think you have in your materials an excerpt from the city's report uh, that describes those, those findings. Um, the first finding was in Title I, and this, this actually relates to a requirement that, that the state monitors, but that we are also tasked with testing. So it, it related to a comparability um, compliance requirement that had already been identified by the Virginia Department of Education and the school system had, had worked through uh, the correction, but because we're also tasked with looking at it, it ends up showing up again. Uh, in this report. The second finding dealt with um, uh, the, some of the reporting that has to be done around school-wide programs and impacts because school-wide programs impact both special ed and Title I. It's identified with both. And this one was really, um, I mean, it occurred because of the unusual and fortunate situation you have of having a lot of construction going on in the school system where sometimes students that are associated with a particular building, you know, are actually being educated in a different building while, while construction is going on. And the reporting gets based on, you know, the, the building that they're assigned to, but they obviously eat lunch in the building <laughs> where they are. The school-wide program uh, requirements are based on students that qualify for free and reduced uh, lunches, and so it, it was really just a documentation issue around, um, you know, where the students were and how the report that went into the Department of Education agreed back to the school lunch program. There were no question costs associated with the finding, uh, no issues uh, in terms of, um, you know, the way the funding went in. It was just simply a complication around the preparation of the report. Um, the last finding uh, related to the special ed program, an account that gets done once a year and reported. And uh, in the testing of that process, there were a couple students, it was really a couple students short. So again, no question costs, no issues with, you know, the funding or the amount granted, but just another anomaly in the way the reports were prepared. And, you know, I would say with, with all of these, some of the turnover that the school system has had in personnel had an impact on it. 
where maybe if the folks who had prepared the reports were still here, um, you know, we could have, you know, closed the loop on, on some of these items. So none of them are anything that I'm concerned about or that I think represent any real issues. Um, but obviously we're, you know, we have to test to the requirements that the, uh, that the federal government lays out for us to follow. Um, any questions on any of that? Before? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the last thing I have for you is um, because we've had some real positive results over the last few years in the controls and the student activity funds, we took a little different approach this year, which actually saved you some fees and and I think still you know adequately covered the risk where. Uh, instead of visiting every school in the school system, we, you know, did a risk assessment with Dr. Thornton and and Shanette and some other folks, and focused on um, a smaller number of schools um, that can be rotated, you know, from year to year, and you know, went out and performed the same procedures that we've performed in the past around uh, those activity funds, which, you know, are are. Uh, small, I guess, in the overall scheme of the school system, but important because they're liquid and, you know, out in the, the hands of the, the folks in the schools. And we didn't identify, I mean, there are always a few little things that can be improved upon, but nothing significant was noted as part of that process. And that report was finished and issued uh, s several months ago. But because this is when I'm here, I thought I would report the findings. So. Any other questions or comments for me? Questions, anyone? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to make sure, thank you, Morgan. Just want to make sure um, Reverend Haywood and Ms. Doyle, you all were on the audit committee. Anything else that you all like to add about the process or the discussions that you've had? Nothing else to add, <clears throat> just to say that we were very pleased with the progress that has been made, the consistency. Thank Dr. Thornton for um, expediting this matter, and um, we enjoy working with uh, this, this lady here. Yes, I would echo just thank you to the KPMG team for being as thorough and transparent and uh, clear with the findings so that we really understand what they are so that we can improve upon those from year to year. Even though they're immaterial, there's still things that we want to improve upon. and. It's helpful to um, hear those tonight. And it's also, I appreciate you talking about the student activity funds and how much progress we've made over the years. And Dr. Thornton, who is the gentleman that works for you that has been instrumental in making sure we are strong with our students? Frank Thompson, and he's now our director of payroll operations right. following the retirement of uh, Keith Bailey. Right. So, you know, you have a great team together that's been making this work very effectively for us for several years now. So, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Thornton, anything further? Thank you to uh, Ms. Sistros and KPMG. Uh, she included me in the credits, but it's really uh, Shanette, where's Shanette? Shanette Felton and her team that really have brought about some of the uh, changes in the way we do things and prepare for the audit. So it's Shanette and her team. And since we last presented 1314, we've added uh, another individual on the team has now received the designation of certified public accountant. So we actually have three on staff, including Shanette, uh, Rhonda Ingram, who you know, and now Ray Reyes. And Frank's replacement, who we hired also, is a certified public accountant. So we're trying to bring on uh, those, uh, not only uh, educational degrees, but most importantly, those industry professional uh, certifications. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have uh, school board recognitions. Uh, Ms. Banks, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, come down front. Good evening. We are pleased to congratulate Willoughby Elementary School for being selected to receive the Virginia Department of Education 2015-2016 
Title I Highly Distinguished School Award. This recognition is based on student achievement during the 2013-14 and 2014-15 school years. A school receives this distinguished award for achieving a mean score at the 85th percentile for both English and mathematics, for meeting full accreditation for a minimum of two consecutive years, and for exceeding the federal accountability benchmark targets for English and mathematics in the current and previous year for all students for each subgroup. High schools must exceed federal graduation indicator targets for all students for each subgroup in the current and previous years. And Willoughby has the extinct distinction of one of nine schools in the Commonwealth to receive this award. of the school board in recognition of Willoughby Elementary School for receiving the Virginia Board of Education 2015-16 Highly Distinguished Title I School Award based on the student achievement during the 2013-14 and 2014-15 school years presented on January 20th, 2016 by the School Board of the City of Norfolk. Congratulations. <laughs> And we have another distinguished school. Pleased to congratulate Sewell's Point Elementary for being selected to receive the 2015-2016 Title I Distinguished School Award. This recognition is based on student achievement during the 2013-14 and 2014-15 school years. And a school receives this distinguished award for receiving a mean score at the 60th percentile for both English and mathematics, for meeting full accreditation for a minimum of two consecutive years, and for meeting or exceeding the federal accountability benchmark targets for all students for each subgroup for the current and for the previous year. High schools must also meet and exceed federal graduation indicator targets. Congratulations to Sewell's Point Elementary, who is one of 86 schools in the, in the Commonwealth to receive this distinguished award. <laughs> and I failed to introduce the principal, that's um, Ms. Mary Russian, and the principal for Willoughby is June Lightfoot. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Boone, Mr. Jordan, that concludes our recognitions. Just like to echo again the uh, congratulations for those two awards. We know how much hard work that goes to that, both from the principal, the teachers, the parents, and of course the, the students themselves. So I think that's outstanding and it's a great opportunity for us to recognize the level of achievement that we have going on in Norfolk Public Schools. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, citizens' comments on agenda and non-agenda items. I'm going to uh, share with those who are here our regular description that we describe in terms of the process for citizen and non-agenda, citizen comments on agenda and non-agenda items, but also wanted to just let the public know that tonight we are uh, live streaming our meeting uh, both online and on television uh, for the first time. Uh, we talked about a, in our little workshop that we had a moment ago that the board uh, made a decision that we wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity for the public to have greater benefit of the discussions that we have as a board the presentations that we receive as this from the staff and the deliberations that we have all in the interest of supporting academic achievement for our children i would just ask as you uh, you know come to the mic just keep in mind that uh, uh, whatever it is that we share both as a board and how we deal with each other and as well as how the public shares uh, whatever concerns and great news that you have to share, that your children are home watching. And uh, <laughs> so we would ask that, uh, that we would all keep that in mind 
both as we deliberate as a board and as we uh, hear from the public. With that said, when your name is called, if you please follow these steps, uh, you can come forward to the speaker's podium. The podium may be adjusted to suit your height. Please state your name, address, and whether you have a child in North public schools or if you are employed by the system. Please state your position and give facts and other relevant data. If you represent a group or organization, you may ask others to rise and be recognized. And if you have any written statements or supporting materials, you may give those to Ms. Banks, the school board clerk. Please know that speakers are limited to one appearance of three minutes. When the clerk signals, signals that your time is up, please quickly end your comments and be seated. And this is very important. The school board does not respond to citizens' remarks at the time that they are given. This is really an opportunity for us as a school board and administration uh, to hear from the public and whatever follow-up is required, we leave that up to the administration uh, to make sure that occurs. So with that said, Ms. Banks. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. We have three speakers who have signed up this evening. Our first speaker is Ms. Mary Simpson-Jones, followed by Deborah Sims. Good evening, Rodney Jordan. Uh, welcome back, Ms. Melinda Boone. Glad to see you and all other board members. Norfolk Public School took the autonomy to make this bright, big policies and procedure books. When you ask students about it, they either thrown it away or do not know where it is. When I go to school, when I go to substitute, I go to teach. I don't go for fun time. So I tell them pertaining to Norfolk Public School protocol, you are not to have a cell phone. Well, our teacher let us use one. I said, well, your teacher's out of protocol because in this book, it says cell phones are not to be seen. But yet, they try every method, hide them underneath the desk to test, hide them underneath their uh, turtlenecks, hide them in their pocketbooks, and mainly if they're not supposed to be seen, why are they, why are they in the back pocket of the students? Some of them even, uh, it, it's just amazing about eating and anything in the book that they are not supposed to do, they do. As you may not know, I was the person who failed through the bleachers of Booker T. Washington High School. And the athletic director did not know, did not do an incident form within 24 hours. She did not know whether I was Jane Doe or what. I, uh, she told me, come back on a Monday. I went back on a Monday, but the building was closed. So I called back on a Wednesday and left my name for the principal and the, and the athletic director. The secretary told me that it takes 24 hours for them to get back with you. So I made a statement, maybe I need to call administration to let them know this. Today I went to Booker T. Washington as a substitute teacher. The children in there was using their cell phones, iPads came in there with headphones and all. Miss Day came in there and escorted me out of the building, said I was causing problems. And I said, even though the children are using vulgar language, back talking with me, being verbatim, you treat me as the victim. She asked me to leave. She did, it, did not even at one time acknowledge to say, um, I regret that you failed out of the bleach. She told me, leave the building, I would be paid for it. And that is, that is a taxpaying citizen of the community. That was very, that was very horrifying, horrifying for me because I felt like I was a prisoner and I was being thrown in jail. And I definitely didn't like how she handled that. And I would like a meeting with her and her supervisor because as I say, there's other things coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Banks. Thank you. 
Miss Sims? <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Deborah Sims. I am a resident of Norfolk. Um, have children who have attended Norfolk schools, and I'm a member of the NFT, and I work at Monroe. Um, just wanted to, I don't know if you can revise, or I wanted to talk about the individual SMART goals that the teachers are supposed to fill out. Maybe they should be changed to other than individual and other than our SMART goals, because when you fill them out, you assess your students, you think you know where they're gonna go, you set up a goal, and then you meet with the teacher, or the principal, then they're not, any, they're not your goals anymore. Um, you're asked or advised to adjust them so they're really rigorous, and after, without even knowing what your students look like or what their, um, a, what their level, current level is. Some of my students this year really shouldn't have came up to first grade and um, I have to raise, DR, DRA level was my goal and I was highly suggested to change them to, much, to a couple more levels than what I attended or wanted to do. And some of my colleagues that are still first grade teachers, some had to change theirs. We all had the same five levels, and two had to change them to six, one had to change to seven, and one got to leave it at five. According to the VDOE, they suggest five levels. Um, and I just think that it's, if it's gonna be your goal, then use individual SMART goal, but if it's gonna be something else, maybe change it a little bit so that it's school-wide or, I don't know, just a little bit more, more I don't even know what I want to say, more, just so that it matches what it's supposed to be, I guess. And I wish you guys were first graders because I would talk a whole lot better. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Ms. Banks. Thank you. And our last speaker um, to sign up, Mr. Jordan, is Ms. Jenny Bobby. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Jordan, Dr. Gabriel, school board members, and Dr. Boone. I'm here tonight as a very concerned parent and special education advocate to speak to you again about the data pertaining to Norfolk reported in the Virginia Department of Education Special Education Performance Report uh, dated June 1, 2015. I brought this to the board's attention in June, October, and now a full six months later, I'm here again to ask, what do you plan to do to improve the educational outcomes of our students with disabilities? Norfolk Public Schools performance ratings have earned the district a code yellow designation as a district that needs assistance. Back in June, I implored the board to follow up with district leadership Implore, I follow up with district leadership to take full advantage of the assistance offered by VDOE and to do everything possible to improve the educational quality and outcomes for our students with disabilities. Did that happen? I was told then that Dr. Rogers had just started. I'm sure once he gets settled in, he'll present his findings and ideas on how to help our students receiving special education services. Has that happened? When I came to you in October, you said, we can't really plan to help students with disabilities right now until the new superintendent is placed. Dr. Boone, I hope you've had a chance to hang up your coat and hat, because here I go again. As an example of how bad things are now, let me share my story. So my daughter, Lily, is a ninth grader with high functioning autism. She has an average IQ and typical verbal communication. Her favorite thing is to make dance videos for her YouTube, cha her YouTube channel, which is monitored, believe me. Norfolk identified her as recent as June of 2015 as being on grade level and on the path to earning a standard diploma. 
That is until she ended up in CSEP. Now, her father and I are being led to believe that she's on the third grade reading level and can no longer earn a standard diploma. I'm asking you, how did my daughter go from being on grade level and seeking a standard diploma to a student who can barely read? The school district must, must provide immediate and earnest focus on the following issues. Indicator one is graduation. Indicator two, dropouts. Parent involvement is our indicator eight. It's all in the letter in front of you. And I provided that same information in June, so it's sort of a repeat. Parents, um, as more and more students with disabilities are identified, the need for more support will be more important than ever to help these students make academic progress. Support staff positions must be increased in order pr to provide the support. I implore you, Dr. Boone, to make the desperately needed change to our special education administration. We need new, focused, and competent leadership in place in order to support our academic teams district-wide. This change must happen soon and happen immediately. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our speakers, Mr. Jordan. All right, we, we thank you again for uh, appearing before the board and bringing your thoughts and comments uh, before us. And uh, we've all made notes, and we will uh, follow up as, uh, as appropriate. Just as a check, uh, when we had the feedback a moment ago, did the mics get turned down? Because I'm not. Is your mic turned down? I'm not. I don't, I don't hear myself, so I just want to oh, make sure okay. folks can hear. I'll double so. check. Okay. okay. Uh, in the meantime, we will uh, proceed on uh, with our agenda. Next up, we have the uh, approval of the consent agenda. Do I have a uh, motion uh, to that end? I move that we approve the consent agenda. I have a second. So I have a motion by uh, Dr. Gabriel and a second by Ms. Wagner. Uh, any further discussion on the consent agenda? All right, Ms. Banks, if you'll call the roll. Thank you. Ms. Bassine? Aye. Ms. Doyle? Aye. Dr. Gabriel? Aye. Reverend Haywood? Aye. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Wagner? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. Uh, next on the agenda is item uh, 6.01. Uh, this is our review policy, DAB, our uh, equity policy. As you know, we've uh, discussed this at our uh, recent work session. We've actually have been uh, working through this policy for some time now. We're here today to uh, to act on the uh, policy before you. Uh, what I would like to do, um, you know, I want to obviously get a motion to uh, uh, to address the, the policy that we have before us, but I wanted to give anyone any additional uh, opportunity, if that's allowed, to uh, uh, if there's any other recommendations that anybody would like to see so that we can then uh, then proceed uh, accordingly. Anyone have anything at this time? Well, um, the, I'll, I'll make a statement. Okay. Well, otherwise, what I would do is accept the motion to uh, uh, for what we have before us, and then we can have uh, appropriate discussion from, from that point. So do I have a uh, motion? Uh, regarding the review policy, DAB, uh, what we call our equity policy, 6.01. Uh, I, oh, <laughs> um, I make the motion to adopt policy DAB, the equity policy. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Okay, so I have a motion to approve and adopt uh, the equity policy DAB that's before you by Ms. Bassine and a second by Ms. Wagner. Uh, further discussion? Yes, Dr. Gabriel. Well, um, thank you for taking us on the, the path that you and staff members and uh, community representatives have had on bringing the equity policy to us and working with um, some of the folks from Roanoke. Um, to get their input on this. I think that one of the most important parts about this policy is that it's going to show us exactly what our needs are and, and it will be an annual thing that occurs um, as I have understood it to be um, after reviewing it uh, several times. 
we already know that we have to retain and we have to attract um, high quality teachers, especially teachers with, with good experience. And I, I just want to go back to this discussion that we had before that um, we have taken into great consideration um, teacher input uh, and how they feel about um, their role in the classroom and, and placement. And so I want them to understand that. I certainly understand that. And I want them to know that we are supporting them 100%. Anything else? Uh, Ms. Bassin? Um, I, too, want to thank the work of the policy committee and the administration that worked on putting this policy together. As I said at the work session, I think it's a, um, a critical policy for the work that we do. I think it sets the framework for how effectively and efficiently we service the wonderful students, or as Dr. Boone says, babies in the, in the system. And I look forward to hearing more about uh, Dr. Boone's and the Equity Task Force recommendations for how we're going to close the achievement and opportunity gaps um, that exist in our district. Thank you. Anyone else? Dr. Robertson? Uh, the most intriguing thing for me, I, I'd have to uh, agree with Dr. Gabriel, is the uh, report card because it's going to give us a clear, concise picture of where we stand as a, as a school division right now and what we need to do to, to move the entire division forward I would uh, the the uh, uh, part that eased some of my concerns was the fact that we're going to take our time and develop uh, thoughtful st strategies in implementing the findings versus just making changes for changes sake because as we know um, a rising tide uh, raises all boats and we, when we say all means all, all means all. Uh, anything, uh, Dr. Boone, anything you'd like to uh, add at this time? I just, like others, reiterate the comments that I made um, at the work session and the fact that many of these practices are the practices that exemplify the beliefs of the board and the governance team. And so this policy ensures that we will have this as a guiding direct a guiding document as we look at and and i like the way uh, dr robinson said as as we begin to improve achievement for all students and all really does mean all and and how do we get there um in terms of an opportunity for making sure that we're aligning resources with where the needs are and continuing to to push the envelope for all students because this is not a policy about students who are deficits. This is a policy about all students and how do we propel them forward with, with the greatest of opportunities with them and the greatest level of supports. And so um, I'm personally excited about having this as a framework for how to, to conduct our business. Ms. Doyle. Um, I would also echo two things. One, Dr. Gabriel, I think it's very important that when embracing this policy, we are very sensitive to teacher preferences. So we hear you loud and clear, and we understand that going forward when we do our audit and we do the recommendations, that we need to be very good listeners to people in the community as well as to those that are in the classroom to see what they believe is in their best interest and in the best interest of the children in the classroom. And the other thing I would say is, like I mentioned before, is that I think we need to work very hard to find additional resources so that we're not shifting current dollars, but finding additional resources to really, as Dr. Robinson said, you know, rising the tide and rise all boats. So our challenge has always been our resources, but I think this is going to um, challenge us to even work harder in finding additional resources so that we can be effective in its implementation. So I would really wanted to make those two comments. And then also I appreciate Dr. Um, uh, Chairman Jordan re-referenced that over time Roanoke has modified this policy once it's been implemented. It wasn't set in stone day one. Once they had it in practice, they realized they needed to make change. And I would ask as a board and as a division that we remain flexible to that because we do not live in a stat we don't live in a static world. And so as things change around us or inside of us, I think it's important that we modify the regulations and or the policy to best fit the needs of Norfolk Public School. Yeah, and I would just echo that. I think that uh, you know, we've worked hard uh, as a board and as a team um, 
stating that we would be a data-driven organization. And really what this equity policy allows us to do is to take uh, all the data that we have already, uh, additional data that will come forward from the work uh, that the task force would do and that the administration would do, and just look at things through an equity lens. And equity means a lot of different things. It's not just about uh, uh, race. It includes race. It includes income. It includes geography. It includes facilities. It includes a lot of different uh, areas. And it's really no different than as a district when we go up to the General Assembly and we say that the conditions in Norfolk may be different than Virginia Beach or may be different than Fairfax. And we want the state to look at their funding of us through an equity lens we're saying we want to be able to do that same type of thing as we look at building the building or for that matter, even inside of, you know, one classroom to it to another as the data has revealed to us. So I'm just appreciative of all the hard work that the board has put in, uh, the work that uh, Dr. Thornton led us, you know, to his point, uh, Dr. Boone coming on board, providing us with additional guidance and uh, Dr. Birdsong and the team. And even as part of the process, just as a reminder, uh, the administration went out and invited uh, other members of the community, including representatives from the Teachers Association and parents and parents that had children who were gifted, parents that had children with other needs. And, and those folks also had an opportunity into the initial framework. So I'm just excited about us being able to get this uh, to this point and then allowing the, the process to continue and being able to look at the data and recommend, recommendations that, that come forward. So is there anyone else have any, any additional comment on this at this time? Uh, hearing none, uh, Ms. Banks, if you would please call the roll. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Bassine? Aye. Ms. Doyle? Aye. Dr. Gabriel? Aye. Reverend Haywood? Aye. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Wagner? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, the monthly financial reports, uh, Dr. Boone. Dr. Thornton is making his way to the microphone um, to, to share the reports. Thank you, Dr. Boone. Agenda item 6.02 is the school board's monthly financial report for the month ending December 31, 2015, which represents the halfway point of the current fiscal year, July 1 through ending June 30, 2016. Are your total revenues, general fund operating revenues, as of December 31, uh, total 146 million, representing 46.4 percent of the total budgeted uh, operating revenue, which is slightly ahead of the pace of revenues received and booked last year. This through December 1, December 31. I'm sorry, uh, and that's due primarily to the timing in which we're receiving uh, our local appropriations from the city. In terms of operating expenditures, uh, the total expenditures for uh, through December 31, 2015. 140.6 million representing 44.7%, which slightly is ahead of pace uh, compared to last year at the same time. And this is due again primarily to the rate in which we have expended or uh, obligated funds toward ongoing school facility uh, needs or maintenance and improvement as well. Uh, you also have in your packet the monthly report for your child nutrition services fund and child nutrition services uh, funds received as of December 31 total just under $5 million, representing 27%, uh, which again is ahead of pace of last year through December uh, 31, 2014. And this again is attributed to the rate and the timing of federal reimbursements uh, as we continue to improve that process over at School Food Services, the submission and the timely receipt of those reimbursements. And as well as your expenditures, uh, for child nutrition services, total 7.4 million compared to the budget of 18.1, uh, representing 41.2%, which is 0.2% uh, ahead of pace of expenditure rates the prior year. Uh, we will continue to monitor revenues and expenditures. Uh, as a matter of fact, we do that on a monthly basis. You do not have that in your report, but we look at uh, a whole lot more detail that rolls into these reports on a monthly basis to monitor uh, that we're trending in the right direction, and if we have to make any adjustments, whether it be revenue or expenditures, then we make those adjustments as needed. And as warranted, we'll share those with the board. Any other questions? 
questions for Dr. Thornton thus far? Please proceed. Uh, that would be it, Mr. That's it. I okay. Okay, well, I okay. do have a question. All right, Dr. Gabriel. <laughs> Dr. Thornton, I was um, looking at the uh, program uh, analysis. Let me just get back up to the page. And I noticed that for summer school, we um, there was, I think it was 87% that was expended versus the, okay, let me get to the page real quick. Right, okay, so 82.4%, and then there was an allotted 50%. Can you just explain how um, we have that difference? Um, the 82% represents what was expended for this past summer, 2015. That's when the okay. majority of the expenditures occur. Okay. The 50% is really just uh, doing the, the math six months out of 12 months. So okay. that's really just the, the fraction of the whole year, 12 okay. months. So those won't align because, again, the majority of the expenditure summer. occurred during the summer, uh, late winter. Remaining 17.6% uh, would be available for the first uh, week of summer school in 16 that will be a part of this fiscal year. This fiscal year, okay. Thank you. So these, these benchmarks are really just Six months. Anyone else? All right. Thank you, Dr. Thornton. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, last, we just have uh, board reports. Uh, we do have the motion. Uh -huh. to oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so excited. Uh, <laughs> do I have a uh, motion to uh, uh, approve and accept the monthly financial report? I move that we accept and approve the uh, the uh, uh, financial report. Second. Second. Uh, it's been properly moved by Dr. Robinson and second by Ms. Doyle to approve and accept the monthly financial report. Please call the roll, Ms. Banks. Thank you. Ms. Bassine? Aye. Ms. Doyle? Aye. Dr. Gabriel? Aye. Reverend Haywood? Aye. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Wagner? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. And as I was saying a moment ago, uh, under board reports, you have uh, notes from uh, Construction Committee. Uh, you've heard earlier uh, the last work session on the ongoing work of the uh, Policy Policy Review Committee. Is there anything uh, from any of the committee members for any other board reports you'd like to share at this time? Okay. Uh, Dr. Boone, do you have any uh, closing thoughts or remarks you would like to give at this time? Oh, no, anything in general, because we're about ready to adjourn. No. Um, thank you all again for, for the, the very good discussion we've had in the last two meetings as it relates to the equity policy. Um, and I know everybody's all excited because they're watching the weather forecast, but the detail forecast says we may get a little snow flurry, but we probably would get somewhere between two to three inches of rain on Friday. So let's not all get excited. Let's just <laughs> hold on. Um, that that this, this weather in, uh, in situation will not impact us like some uh, areas just slightly west of here and everything else. But um, as of this moment and looking forward, we're normal operations in Norfolk until the weather gives us a different forecast. <laughs> so no need to call and, and ask those questions. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, we, we will notify you, but we are, please know, we, we are um, watching the, the weather very carefully and will make the appropriate call to ensure safety and security, safety of all students and staff and, and operations. But we, we are monitoring it closely. And I know everyone's getting excited. I understand uh, people are already out in the grocery stores. So <laughs> you'll be prepared for next week's groceries, <laughs> next week's meals, because this, this one is gonna, not gonna probably do what we think it's gonna do. Uh, and we're glad for that. We don't want any momentum, breaking momentum for our instructional programs because every break means we have to start all over again and, and we lose some ground. So let's, let's hopefully we'll have uh, no breaks anytime soon. So uh, thank you all. Okay. So we're going to reconvene in closed session in a moment, but Ms. Doyle, you have something 
additional you'd like to share? Sure. I just wanted to acknowledge we have some principals here in the audience that have taken their evening hours to join us tonight. So I just wanted to thank you all very much. You do a lot of hard work during the day, and you're here tonight. So thank you very much. And then I also just wanted to thank the administration. As Mr. Jordan mentioned, tonight's our first live streaming of a business meeting. And that's a huge step forward for us with being further transparent with the community and allowing the community to see what we do during these meetings. So I want to thank the administration and the folks that are on a few floors below us that have worked hard to make this happen tonight and for their continued work. But again, I just, the administration has done yeoman's work to help us achieve our goal of being more engaged with the community and having our doors more widely open for them to come and see our work. So I just wanted to say thank you. So I uh, re ask if you all just stay seated for a moment. What we're going to do is I'm Mr. going to. Mr. Jordan, I did have something I, I needed to say. <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you, sir. I wanted to inform Norfolk Public Schools, Dr. Boone and the board that the Norfolk Jazz Foundation presented the um, Stephen Daly, the director of um, the jazz band here in Norfolk, and also the uh, music director, um, uh, Dr. Um, Roby, yes, um, with a $5,000 check towards the music program. I was hoping that that would be presented today, but uh, this is the second time that they've done this in the last um, two years. And so our thanks to the Jazz Foundation for their close support of our music program here at Norfolk Public Schools. Thank you very much. So if you all stay seated for a moment, I'm going to adjourn uh, this meeting and then we're going to vote to go back into closed session and at the end of that vote, then uh, everybody can stand up and cheer. So I'm going to call this meeting to an end. And uh, now I'd like to uh, entertain a motion for us to uh, go into a closed session. I move that we enter into closed session. Uh, do I have a second? <coughs> second. Second. Uh, properly moved by Dr. Gabriel and second by Dr. Robinson. Ms. Banks, if you please uh, read the resolution. Seven one one of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act as amended for the discussion or consideration of the disposition of publicly held real estate property where the discussion in an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body as authorized by Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A3. Ms. Bassine? Aye. Ms. Doyle? Aye. Dr. Gabriel? Aye. Reverend Haywood? Dr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Wagner? Aye. Mr. Jordan? Aye. Thank you. All right, so it's five after eight if we could uh, convene at 810, and I think we can wrap up and go home. So everyone have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.